Hey guys, welcome to part two of our Resident Evil remake playthrough. Uh, I'm Chris Allen. How you doing? I'm Dave Moog. And we're going to do something a wee bit different this time, aren't we, Christopher? Uh, yes, yes, I believe you're going to take control. So yeah. I'll leave it to the viewers to decide if there's any increase in the quality of the game, please. Yeah, you'll certainly notice we'll get through it a lot faster this time round. Uh, Christopher was quite the sluggish on the controls, but uh, if you if you had knew him in real life, you would know that's just what he's like. Thanks. So straight away we're moving into a new area, uh, never before seen in Resident Evil before. Christopher, would you want to talk about the mirrors here? Uh, yes, I was just like a plane through it by myself, and um, like I love the mirrors as features, like to see what's going on. I actually saw my first crimson head in this room. Uh, on a mirror right before I ran away. So. Not quite sure what this room's meant to be though, is it it's a kind of armory or something like yeah, that? Yeah, I would say it's an armory and there's a spears up and down the side. So. Um, there's the spears, look like candlesticks to me, but I suppose it does make a wee bit more sense that they would be spears. You'll see we picked up an object there. Uh, one of the things that Resident Evil likes you to do is give your objects an examination. So. This looks like a, a golden arrow we've got here, but when you examine it, uh, you're told that the arrowhead can be removed yeah. and turned into what looks like a kind of dual arrowhead. So let's see what happens with that. I'm sure we'll be able to do something with that to unlock some kind of puzzle or adventure. So getting back to it, again, you see the, you see with the mirrors. Doors locked from the other side, it's become a quite a common feature of this mansion. Yeah. Well, you you to unlock that one. And let's see where this takes us. Oh, we're back in a familiar room. We've seen this one before, but not but not from this floor. We're now on above the, the dining room, which is one of the first rooms that we start in. That's the room that the Barry couldn't kill the super zombie with the three Colt Python shots. So this door should take us back into the, the main entranceway. And it certainly does. Now we're about to head into a new area here. Through this door here on top of the staircase. Again, it's not an original game. But it's going to take us back out into the courtyard. So this might look new to a, a few people. You'll see here that this uh, courtyard it's, it's not so much of a courtyard as, as a graveyard, which is a wee bit surprising. Not many people have got a graveyard in the in the court. Another another door locked on the other side. You can see an item around there. Can't quite make out what that is. And da da da, more graves. A lot of yeah. people died in this mansion. We've only got the one space, so you'll notice there that what looks like a box of shotgun shells, but you can come back for them at a later date. Yeah, also a common feature in most graveyards, shotgun shells. Well, no, no, that's not where I like to leave mine. So here we go, we've got the first of uh, the puzzles of the game. This one shouldn't be too difficult. I think the only real trouble you would maybe have had there if you didn't check the arrow to get the arrow head off it. So we're just going to insert it in here to see what happens. A new pathway's opened up. Uh, I quite like this new pathway here. This is. This kind of reminds you of a good kind of horror film, isn't it? You've got kind of yeah, the lighting does. effect here. You know, so you've got the, the fan going round as well. So this is a, again another, another brand new area. You see here again what looks like more tombstones with statues on it. Okay. The statues all look slightly different. Some have eyes missing, some have noses missing. I'm sure this looks like, I'm sure this will be a, another puzzle of the game. We've got an item flashing over here, it looks, what looks like to be a book. So let's pick this up. The Book of Curses. Yeah, the very ominous. Yeah. Christopher's mother and father actually invented the Book of Curses. They needed it for him growing up. There was a lot of cursing going on. So we'll give this book a re-examination again. See what's there. Do you know how to work a book there, Mo? Oh, yeah, yeah. You always turn to the back off it and look for yeah. a key. Uh, that's why I didn't get a lot of books written. It's not always the key at the back. So we're going to remove this key. Uh, so we've got a mansion key. That should unlock some of the rooms we've got now. And oh, it looks like we're also going to get a wee story here as well. The Book of Curses. 
the four masks. So I think it's going to be a wee explanation of what we've actually got in the room here. We've got a mask that speaks no evil, a mask that smells no evil, a mask that sees no evil, and a mask that cannot speak or smell. And of course, see evil. When all four are put into place, an evil will awaken. I wonder if that evil will be the the coffin that's just yeah. dangling above our head right now. But anyway, it doesn't look like that's going to open any time soon, but it looks like we'll definitely be coming back to this room. Possibly with four masks. That's also quite interesting, it's like giving a warning that an evil will awaken. Jill's uh, first thought is like, let's do exactly what it says in the book. That's all about getting the, the, the puddles completed, you know, got to, got to follow on like a good soldier. So we're going to go back into the mansion now and we'll see if we can get some of these doors unlocked. But we do have a key now. Let's just have a wee check of the key just to see. Yep, yep. You'll see there that we've got a wee sword. That means it'll open any door in the mansion that says that you need an emblem of a sword. And I think we've came across a couple so far. I think we've came across swords and armour. Uh, you'll notice that I used the key in that door, but I've not went, quite went through it yet. Uh, I'm just trying to use it, it, use it in as many doors as possible. Just so we can get get rid of it. Yeah, because I've like noticed in my place where the space is really quite tight, even with Jill, who's got the two extra spaces. So if you pick up too much, you can easily have to miss stuff and go back. So. Yeah. And obviously that's going to be even worse then if, you're, if you go crash through a blue stance again with a couple of less spaces than Jill does. Although I think you can pick something up later on so you carry more. So we're into another room here. I'm just going to use my lockpick to unlock that door. And I think we're going to make our way down to the first safe room. Oh, got a wee zombie in the stairs here. He's down. Oh, he's down, so good. I'll just reload there when you have a wee nap in the stairs. Take a wee wander around here. I feel feeling this next door is going to be, yeah, it's locked with the emblem of armour. So hopefully that will be the next key that we, we get. But we're going to have a wee wander in here first, now that we've used yeah. the lockpick to see what we've got. Uh, and as we explained in part one uh, of the show, that we got what was a kind of dagger, which we... Christopher demonstrated putting it in one of the zombies' heads. This yeah. battery pack also acts in the same way. It doesn't take up an inventory slot, and you can choose to equip either your battery pack or your da or your dagger. Yeah, I noticed uh, that they also, uh, if you've got a dagger, they appear on your character model, which I thought was a nice touch. Yeah, quite interesting. See if I can get a good image. Of it. Yep, there it's there. By our, by our kind of left hand side. That's your high definition dagger. Right, the next room we should be heading into then should be the first of the, the game's many save rooms, which we're going to be quite grateful for, because each save room seems to have an ever-linking chest, that no matter where you are in the game, if you put anything in the chest it seems to appear later on, uh, the game mechanics don't quite explain that one. Yeah. Bottomless chest. So here we are in the first save room, there's a typewriter which we, which we certainly want to save your game you can use. We've got another wee story here, we'll just skip through that, it's basically a, a wee tutorial telling you that you should be burning the zombies so that they don't get back up. We unfortunately don't have either the lighter or the kerosene to burn any zombies. We can just pick up more bullets here as well. We'll put the knife away, we are playing on, on, on easy mode. I don't think we need to do our first save just yet, we'll, we'll carry on. For, for a wee bit, maybe at the next save room we'll, we'll, we'll give it a save. I'm feeling quite confident, don't you, Crystal? Uh, yes. So now that we've cleared a wee bit of space for ourselves, we should be ready to head back round to the other side of the mansion. We won't go through the door that I unlocked just a wee second ago with the lock pick. Again, a wee bit of insider trading here that. It may be the case that we want another item before we just go back to that, to that room. Our friend the zombie here seems to have moved round to the other side. I'm tempted to move this statue over. 
but we'll, we'll maybe leave that for a bit early for date. What we will do first, just before we carry on though, is I'm just going to head down the stairs and through the door back into the dining room. I believe we've got another another room that we can unlock. But it's not that important at this stage. But again, it's just to try and get us a wee bit of space in the, the inventory. Yes, I think that would be wise. The problem with the keys, now there actually are some key, uh, there actually are some rooms, sorry, that you can unlock that aren't actually essential for the for the game. But it then means you end up carrying about a bunch of keys. Apparently, you know, they can carry these extra daggers and battery packs for no cost. But to uh, actually get a keychain, there's Super Zombie, another three shots, she's still coming. So this is now six shots she's had, three of which have been a cold pie. Thing. Oh, he's finally down, but is he going to stay down? I think he is. Yeah, you can see the, the blood pouring from him there. Oh, this door's still locked, another end of armour, key will certainly be keen to get. Are we heading downstairs here? And there we go, another use for the mansion key. But again, I'm, I'm just going to head straight back up there. We're not quite ready for this bit of the game yet. Nobody, super zombies managed to stay down. I'll tell you one thing, we're definitely, we're definitely coming back to burn that zombie. I don't want to see the crimson head version of that. But yeah. So earlier on in uh, part one you should have seen Christopher collecting the map, so we're going to head back to that room now. It was also the room where we encountered the first zombie that we actually fought, as I believe you ran from the first, the super zombie at the beginning of the game, Christopher. Ah, that indeed. Yes, conserved your ammo, good tactic. But hopefully there won't be too many foes to fight around here. So again, yep, yeah, we've used the mansion key again, and there's no further use for it. So do we want to discard it or not? I don't know. It could be useful to throw it in a zombie's eye. No, we'll just give it a, we'll just give it a discard. Uh, well, if you're out ammo and need some to throw in the zombie's eye later on, could I regret that? Well, you you can remind me. You can remind me of that later on if it if it, if it comes to that stage. Again, I would join the, the the viewers that we are playing on an easy mode. So I'm hoping we're not going to run out of ammo. But you never know. We've got another dagger, I believe that means we've got a, a couple now, a couple of daggers and a battery pack. Oops, are we are we cracking the window there? Maybe it was a crow. The wind outside. You can see here I've definitely played this before. I know all the I know all the secrets. This this year. Apart from what way to push that. Well I can you can push it both ways. I'm actually just pushing it this way for the benefit of showing the, the viewers the, the magazine clip. Well, you can't, because the wall pops on the other side. But no, there's, there's, there's certainly no wall there. <laughs> At least I've obviously got the ability well, we'll to let pick the, up. We'll let the viewers decide. <laughs> so as we carry on through into the into the mansion, uh, you see there, that scene is a scene, also one from the original game here as well. Kind of close up there, Jill, but there is a green herb missing from the original game. We'll use a lockpick again, we'll go out here. This is one of these frustrating rooms where there's actually quite a lot of things to collect, but nothing overly essential. You get a lot of good herbs out here, but I think, again, we'll play that in easy mode. I think we'll just give it a wee skip. I don't think we're going to need that many herbs. And we're also not going for our top ranking either, will we? Yeah. A bit of an interesting fact for anyone out there that is maybe trying to get the, the better rank for completing the game that... Uh, you, you will find that using a red and a green herb combined together to replenish your full health uh, doesn't affect your score the same way that using one of the first eight sprays does. So here we are, I think this is the first bathroom we've been in so far, hasn't it? Uh, so yes, I believe so. Quite an interesting fact about the Resident Evil series that, the, that uh, you don't often see quite a lot of toilets. Uh, in fact, in the police station in Resident Evil 2 there's none whatsoever. So I don't know how those officers relieve themselves from duty. So I never that one thought. We're going to encounter another zombie here. Joe's managed to fall down yet again. What's that number three? Number three. Time of crisis. Oops. 
It looks like we've got an imitating zombie here. Yeah. Joe doing a wee bit of dirty dancing there. And uh, you'll, you'll appreciate that tactic there, because that certainly conserved the ammo. Yeah. yeah, well, despite it not being the first zombie she's approached, it's the first one that certainly made it. And looks like we've got dagger, dagger number three there. We've got a good wee arsenal, so we should be prepared for close quarters combat. So we're going to continue on again. Uh, I must admit, I don't know if I like the decorator for this mansion. Uh, I mean, you need some of the stories. It actually implies that the mansion is quite recently built, but it looks as though it was decorated back in the 1940s. Yeah, vintage style. Vintage style. Uh, this is an interesting room here. You'll notice the, the umbrella logo on the on the floor there. And if we get, yep, we get some nice close-ups there, the, the wall is certainly a lot different. Uh, this room is obviously quite plain in the original game. Quite an odd wee room as well, just a, a yeah. tiny wee square room that leads into another. Yeah. So now we've got, now what we've got appears to be a kind of sitting room. Uh, looks like there's a wee dagger on the table there. This dagger number four, number five. I don't quite remember. Five total, maybe. And we've also got a wee, a wee egg to win there as well. Which I'm also very popular tonight. The first of my friends just came online. This is what we're really after in here, though. First kind of weapons upgrade, we've moved to the shotguns. You'll see a wee mechanic, mechanicism there. I wonder what that does. I will just ignore it. Yeah. It's like, what's the worst that can happen? Yeah, quite right. So heading back out into the wee umbrella room. Still obviously won't be too familiar with what umbrella is at this stage. Oh, let's move into a wee cutscene. And the ceiling's coming down. Oh dear. I don't know how we're going to get out of this one. Just oh, well, why don't you try the door? Let's go for that. Oh, it's now magically. Is that me? Another oh, door. Another door. Let's give this a try and get back into the room. But we might be stuck in there. Are you sure you want to go for that? Aye, we can climb out the window or something. Oh, it won't open either. We're in trouble oh. now. The first of the umbrella traps, it looks like it's going to be the ending office. If only there's someone available to help, but Barry's around the other side of the building. Oh, no, he's not. Not in that coat again. Doesn't even blast the door handle off. Yeah. It did seem to stop the door. Maybe he's loaded the wrong ammo in it or something. Well, we're getting it. You'll notice there that the door was quite clearly broken as we were getting pulled out, but yet it somehow managed to materialise again just for the, the wee sequence. Well, we've made it out alive thanks to the head of Barry. That was a close one. That second lane but again, Joe's on the, the floor again. That was his number four now. Yeah. Thanks. Although I was always disappointed they never kept the original Joe sandwich line, and they slightly altered that. Maybe it's because the, the Joe Sandwich restaurant which now has been built based on this game. Maybe they might own the, the name and rights to that line now. Maybe, maybe. You can see a picture of that restaurant on the Resident Evil Wikipedia page. So, on the plus side, uh, Barry does get Joe to owe one. I'm sure that'll make it all worthwhile. So we're continuing on now. We've used our mansion key, so we've got all the doors open. So. Obviously we want to try and find more keys, and I don't know about you, but I also wouldn't maybe mind finding this lighter either. Yes, I think that could be a good call. That door we've just walked through, you've always got to be careful there, that, that's got a dodgy door handle. We've got another, another friend to shoot, oh, one shot and he's down. Oh, I don't see blood, he's not staying down. I'm going to retreat back here. And he's gone. I don't know quite how I've managed to get him over this side of the room. That's the one of the poor things about the camera angles there. Right, I think we might want to try one of our first saves here. Yeah, why not? Uh, fuck no, do you know what? I think we'll soldier on. Soldier on, how about it? We'll wait till we Play. get to it. Won't be foolish, but we'll see. So again, we've got another hell that we can we can shove away a wee bit more space. 
don't quite think we need the shotgun at this stage. Not the chemical, so that should free it up for a wee bit more space. We've got the the kerosene here. This is this is the item that you can use with the uh, the lighter if you want to burn the zombies. But unfortunately, we've not got the lighter yet. And just get a few more bullets here as well. We may as well fill up the kerosene before we go, but we'll put it back in the in the safe. Right, so we're ready to soldier on now. Oh. I thought we were getting locked in there. Yeah. So we head back upstairs. I think we've been to all floors and all sides now of this mansion. Oh. Quick thinking there. Yeah, that was a nice move after all. Four shots. Maybe we didn't put it on easy mode after all. Or maybe it's just your bad aim. Finally unlocked a door. But we're just going to do a wee kind of quick turn here. Christopher, you're always a big fan of the herbs, aren't you? Uh, yes, I was indeed. So you'll appreciate this room, then. This is one of the first rooms that actually tells us how to use the herbs. Also, got a wee dog whistle there as well. Uh, the dog whistle, this is obviously a, a new feature of the game that you, you maybe remember the door that unlocked just around the other side just up there. That's obviously a new bit and this is what the, the dog whistle relates to. We'll let the viewers have a wee read out of the story there. And then we may as well head off there next. Why not? As we're still looking to get some more keys. Preferably I'd like to get that armour key. <laughs> I think at that stage that's the one we need. And of course that's a, a memo by John Tolman. Thanks for that John. Now just a, a piece Christopher. We'll see if we can get the wee journal about the... Oh! Oh that's, like that's, what, that that's, useful that's what we've been looking for. But Christopher also likes to learn about his herbs. We'll just skip through this. So anyone who isn't an, uh, a Resident Evil expert. The herbs basically are, could be, be combined in a number of combinations. The best one you want is always to combine the red and the green herb, and that's the one that gives you your full health. You can always combine a couple of greens together if you're needing that extra yeah, bit of space and in the inventory. Emergencies, so. yeah. And also a wee bit later on in the game we'll get the, the blue herb as well. You possibly have noticed that walk past the, the wooden mount there that's only you only really need that if you're going to the to the, the second floor map and it's not something that's essential to the game and meet both myself and Crystal and we'll be around we're going to meet Barry and his buddy the dodgy colt uh, but you might want to know for this point of the game here that you should always keep a free inventory slot for this scene with Barry as he gives you a couple of acid rounds one of the better grenade rounds you get in the game the scene still takes place. If you don't have the inventory slot, it just doesn't give you the item. A can of fizz. I'd be feel a lot more comfortable if he gave us that cold python. I'm certainly not doing him any favours. It's yours. Hopefully you won't have to use it. And there we go. We've got an acid chillers. What about you? It's unfortunately nothing to use him with. Yeah, yeah. and they're gonna drive off with a gun that didn't do much. Thanks. I'll take You've got a couple of one shots with our little Beretta. Yeah. Just goes to show, Christopher, as you've always hoped, size doesn't matter. So I'll continue on, we're going to head back round to the, the the door we unlocked earlier on. We might even try and live a wee bit dangerously, we can maybe push the statue at this stage as well. You'll notice in this statue we've got a, what appears to be like a blue stone. We're not quite ready to use it yet, but in order to get access to it, we've got to push this statue over the leads, like so. And now we can continue on. So it looks like we're going to be ready to try out our, our new, our newest item, the dog whistle.
So again, this is a new area. Not not seen the original game. It's like a kind of kind of balcony in the second floor. So we got run down. You also notice there there was a selection of green herbs that you can't actually pick up. You can just use them for your convenience. So let's try out the dog whistle. We'll blow it. Nothing seems to have happened. Oh, oh, the dog. Oh, he's got me. Well, it may have something on its persons. It's shining. Or its doggings. And his friend's going down as well. So what's he got there? We've got a dog collar. I can't quite possibly think what we would do with a dog collar. There's nothing in the game so far to suggest that we could use that. So let's give it a wee examination. Seems like a pretty standard dog collar. Let's have a wee look at the jewel. Oh, there's a switch on it. Not common to have a switch on a dog collar. Will we give it a wee push? Let's see what happens. We've got what appears to be a hidden coin. Nothing unusual about that. Why don't we examine the coin further? It's got the oh, it's got the carving of armor. That's what we want. Yeah. And oh, it seems to have changed into what looks like the shape of a key. Shape of a shape key. Shape of a key. I don't think. I don't think it's quite going to work in the doors. Uh, anyway, that's an interesting room. Just before we leave, I'm just going to run back here. I believe this is one of these pesky doors that yeah, it needs unlocked. You can always come back through this at stage early day on. It later on is a bit of a shortcut, so it's always good to get that unlocked. So we've got a few items now kicking about that we don't need. I do think when we leave this area at last because we want to discard the dog whistle, but that now might be a good time to go down and use the you use the typewriter. Yeah, we definitely don't need that dog whistle anymore. It's one thing to throw a key in the zombie's eye. I don't think the dog whistle is going to do much. No, no. So let's just discard that. We also want to start having a wee think about just what zombies we, we do and don't want to burn. Obviously this uh, this particular area we're in right now is a is a common area to kind of walk through. We are going to have to come back and forth around here. So you see that there are a couple of zombie bodies here. So it might be a good idea now to get that kerosene first and just dispose of them. Also give some of the viewers a good chance to see something burn. Yeah. So we'll go do the one on the stairwell, and I think we'll just do the one outside the room. There are certainly some other zombies we definitely want to get as well. So there's the first one. He goes, he goes up in flames. And we can get his, his friend on the stairs. So we'll get a wee bit closer for this one. And so it's just not too close. Yeah, there he goes. Now just before we go back into the save room, if you remember round at this room round here, we did have a a kind of can of kerosene in here. So we'll give it a wee a wee bit. Yes. Obviously just be prepared for later on. Always good. So anyway that's I think that's a good, a good wee half hour play I've had here, Christopher, so We'll not be. We'll just be about to finish up the second part. Uh, are you ready to take over again for part three? Uh, yes, I'm looking forward to it. Well, I hope you guys will be tuning in for part three. Uh, in the meantime, if anyone would like to leave comments for this video, both myself and Christopher will will try and get back to you. We like to respond to the the sensible comments, don't we, Christopher? Uh, yes, we do. Uh, but let's be honest. We sometimes also comment on the, on the unsensible ones as well. Just before we we'll log off, we'll, we'll do our, our first save for the playthrough. We'll get rid of these acid rounds as well. I don't think we're going to need them for a wee while. So, and we should get rid of the lighter. Anyway, guys, I hope to see you again next time. Alright? Yep. I'll catch you next time. Thanks.